Welcome to Sahaja Yoga, meditation's first steps. And today we'll learn how to actually improve our subtle system with more advanced uh, clearing techniques. But before we do that, uh, I would like to introduce Mark, who will walk us through the process of self-realization and give us a presentation of our subtle system. See you soon. Hi, Mark is my name. Welcome to Saj Yoga. Today you're going to get your self-realization. And self-realization is an actual spiritual event that's going to take place now with an exercise that we were about to do. Okay, so what's going to happen is that you have an energy in the base of your spine here, in the triangular bone, called the Kundalini. This energy is known as Kundalini in Sanskrit, but if you're from a Christian background, you could say it's the Holy Spirit. If you're from an Islamic background, it's the Ru, the breath of God. If you're Jewish, it's the Ruah. If you're Aboriginal, it's called the Rainbow Serpent. All the different cultures have understood that there is a, an activation that has to happen, a second birth, your enlightenment, and so on. And this is what's about to take place for you right now. So this energy is going to rise up your spine, and you're going to feel a cool breeze coming out of the top of your head. And that cool breeze is the proof that something's actually happened. Now, when you look at the old spiritual paintings, for example, you can see the halos around the saints, you know, in the old Christian paintings. That's a depiction of this awakening. If you're a Buddhist, you have a lotus flower on Lord Buddha's head. It's the same thing. If you're from a Hinduism background, it's the waterfall from Lord Shiva's head. If you're from Islamic background, it's the fire coming out of the prophet's head, for example. There's a lot of old paintings that depict this. So all of these great religions understood that there's a spiritual event that has to happen, okay? And that's what's going to happen today. Now, what happens is that within you, as you can see from this diagram, this is a depiction of your central nervous system. And what happens is that within your central nervous system, you can see we have these what we call subtle centers. And these subtle centers are along the various nerve plexuses along your spine. There are six of them, and the seventh one is the limbic area of the brain, where there, there's the thousand nerves, right? So what happens is that physically, it's your nervous system, right? But according to the Sajoga subtle system, it's not just physical. You, it, this system controls your mental, emotional, spiritual, and physical life. Okay? You have two sides. You have a left side and you have a right side. The left side is the side of your emotions. It's also the past. Okay? It's the feminine side of you. And according to Sad Yoga, if you feel sad and depressed and you get problems of that kind of a nature, that that means you have an imbalance on your left side, okay? And you feel it as heat on your left hand. On your right side, this is the side of action. It's your ego. It's the future. It's futuristic thinking and so on. So if you're a very ambitious, driven, kind of dry kind of a person who thinks a lot, then you're prone to be more of a right-sided person and you would feel heat on the right hand. So what happens is that you get a sense of the balance. You can't be in the past. We all know that. That's gone. We can't be in the future. Future doesn't exist. We have to be in the present. And what happens is your hands tell you. You can see the depiction of the fingers. You can see the different colors. And those colors represent, it shows you. So the, the, this finger here is your heart chakra, for example. If you have a problem in your heart chakra, you feel it on this finger and this finger. If you have a problem on your Nabi chakra here, which is all about satisfaction and so on, you would feel the second finger. So what happens is that these chakras represent the different qualities or aspects of your character. So as we said, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, it's holistic, okay? And you feel it on your fingertips. So any imbalance you have, you feel. So in the old books, they would say, 
Know thyself. This is how you know yourself. You get to understand yourself at a vibrational level, what we call vibrational level. And then it's like a mirror. You can see yourself. You can cure your own imbalances because some of these problems will be uh, health related, for example. So if you're diabetic, it's this center here, the second chakra here, this, this Nabi chakra here, third chakra. If you have high blood pressure, it's this one for example, and it's all on the right side, it means you're overactive, you're too futuristic. So you can actually alleviate a lot of those problems using Saj Yoga. And Saj Yoga, there's many, many health benefits with that. So for instance, we've already done studies on uh, asthma, for example, which is a problem on this center here. So you can actually resolve any asthma or any asthmatic type problems you have using Saj Yoga techniques. And that's um, something for another program. But, but understand that at the root level, this system here reflects you holistically. Okay. So you begin to feel the tingles on those fingertips related to the various imbalances that you have. And that this energy rises up and comes out of the top of your head and you feel it as a cool breeze, shows you that something's happened, it's been activated. You now enlightened. So if you're a Buddhist, that's your enlightenment. If you're a, a Muslim, it's your, it's your mirage. If you're a, a, a Christian, you're born again because this spiritual awakening is taking place and you get a full awareness of yourself. Okay. So that's the miracle of Saj Yoga, but it's very, very simple to do. So what we're going to do today is actually go through the exercise to feel this cool breeze for ourselves. And over time, with practice, you'll begin to understand all of this for yourself. And there's many, many references and resources we can point you towards for that. So we'll do the exercise. It's very simple. Now, what you've got to do is you just sit shoes off, feet on the floor. Okay. Now, you've got to put your left hand out uh, towards us. No problem. And we're going to use our right hand to activate the energy. And this right hand we're going to use on the left side of the body. And we're actually going to be placing it just on the positions of the various centers. Okay. We're going to start now. I'll walk you through it so that you understand, you can see, because we're going to close our eyes, right? So start on the heart. Put your right hand on your heart. Then we're going to bring it under the rib cage on the left side. So it's all on the left side with the right hand. Okay. Then we're going to bring it into the belly button area. So you can just press in with the heel of your palm into the sort of belly button. Then we're going to bring it back up under the ribs. Then we're going to be on the heart again. Okay. Then next one, we're going to put it on the corner of the neck on the left side and turn our head to the right like this. Okay, we hold it nice and firmly in there. Across the forehead, right, with our chin down. And then across the back part of the head with our chin up. Okay. And then finally, we're going to take the center of our palm and we're going to put it on the fontanelle bone area, which is actually slightly forward of the crown. And we press in, fingers back, press in nice and firmly, and we're going to rotate our scalp seven times clockwise. And along the way, we're going to say affirmations. Okay. So that's the physical side of the exercise. Um, I'll guide you through it so you can close your eyes now and uh, we can go ahead. Okay. So close your eyes, hands out, put your right hand on your heart. And here in your own mind, you don't have to say it out loud in your own mind. We're addressing this Kundalini energy as our mother. Okay. She is a mothering energy. So here we can say three times inside our own thoughts, mother, am I the spirit? Just three times. Mother, am I the spirit? Now we bring our hand down under the rib cage on the left side. And here we can say again three times, Mother, am I my own teacher? Mother, am I my own teacher?
And now we can bring our hand down into the belly button area. Like we said, press the heel of your palm in near your belly button. And here six times you can ask or you can affirm, Mother, please give me the pure knowledge. Mother, please give me the pure knowledge. Six times. Now you can bring your hand back up under your rib cage, and here ten times you can say, Mother, I am my own teacher. Mother, I am my own teacher. Ten times. Now we can bring our right hand across our heart and now 12 times we can say, Mother, I am the Spirit. Mother, I am the Spirit. And now we can put our hand in the corner of our neck on the left side, turn our head to the right. And here we can say 16 times, Mother, I am not guilty. Mother, I am not guilty. And now we can bring our right hand across our forehead with our chin down. And here we just say once, but from the heart, Mother, I forgive everyone. Mother, I forgive everyone. You've got to let it, you gotta let it go, otherwise this area won't, uh, won't release. You have to forgive everyone. And now, with your hand on the back of the head, with your chin up, again, you can just say once, but from the heart, Mother, please forgive me if I've made any mistakes. Mother, please forgive me if I've made any mistakes. And finally, with our hand on the top of the head, the center of the palm on the fontanelle bone area, pull your fingers back, rotate the scalp quite firmly, 
seven times clockwise. And each time, just ask, Mother, please give me my self-realization. Mother, please give me my self-realization. Mother, please give me my self-realization. Seven times. Now when you're done, slowly lift your hand above your head about six or seven inches and just see if you can feel a cool breeze coming. So you might have to move your hand up or down, left or right. You just got to find a spot where you can feel that there's a little cool breeze, like someone blowing on your hand. It's quite subtle. See if you can feel that spot. Sometimes it's quite high. And it could be forward or back. So try and find that spot where you can feel the cool breeze. If you're feeling warm, it means that that uh, Agya chakra, the sixth chakra there is still catching. But if it's cool, it means it's come up. Try your other hand as well. Sometimes you can feel it better with one hand than the other, depending on yourself. See, so you find that spot where you can just feel a little cool breeze. As I said, it's quite subtle, like someone blowing your hand. You might think it's a breeze in the room or your air conditioning or something, but actually, when you move it around, it's just on one spot, so you know it's the Kundalini. Okay, so that's the self-realization exercise. If you haven't felt that cool breeze, you can repeat the exercise if you like. Um, the other thing is that you can just put your hand across your forehead and just say, I forgive, I forgive a few times and just sort of repeat it until you can feel it coming up. what it is. We cannot conceptualize it with our human awareness. We cannot order it. We cannot manipulate it. We cannot organize it. It is what it is, has been and will be. And what is the truth? Truth is that we are surrounded or we are penetrated or we are nourished, looked after and loved by a very subtle energy which is the energy of Divine Love. The second truth is that we are not this body, this mind, these conditionings, this ego, but we are the Spirit. You don't have to accept what I'm saying blindly, because blind well, faith leads to fanaticism. But as scientists you must keep your mind open and see for yourself what I'm saying, if it is so, honestly, you must accept it. <clears throat> we know so much through science about our civilization, our advancement. This is the advancement of a tree which has grown outside very much. 
But if we do not know our roots, we will be destroyed. So it is important to know about our roots. And this is what it is that I would say are our roots. As you can see, there are seven centers within us. And these subtle centers are placed in the spinal cord and in the brain. These cater to our physical, mental, emotional and spiritual needs. On the physical side, they manifest the energy for the use of our plexuses, which look after our physical problems. That is on the right side, the energy which is supplied by this yellow line, a subtle channel, we call it as the Pingala Nadi. This supplies energy for our physical and mental actions. So this is the power of action within us, which also caters to the right sympathetic nervous system. The another channel you see on the left hand side is the channel by which we desire, put our energy to our desire. So this is the power of desire and looks after our emotions. This is the one which looks after our conditionings also. At the end of these two channels, they create two institutions, one on the right side crosses over and the yellow balloon that you see is the ego, is the balloon of ego that we have. And the left hand side one, the, which conditions our mind, is the balloon of superego. As we start growing in age, by the time we are twelve years of age, these two completely meet and the soft bone in our head becomes completely calcified. Now there's third energy within us, which is in the center. And this center, central energy is the one which has made us human beings. And these centers are the milestones of our evolution. So now the last jumping is left out. It has reached up to the limbic area. Now only thing is it has to break through the soft bone in the on the head and break through that, which is the actualization of baptism. Baptism is not an artificial thing. It is an actualization. But the energy that does it is we call it sleeping energy in the triangular bone called as sacrum. That means the Greeks knew that this is a sacred bone, that they called it sacrum. This energy has to rise and break through that fontanelle bone area and connect us to that subtle divine power which we have never felt during human awareness.
Thus, we get connected to this Divine Power and we start feeling it on our fingertips. It's described in the Qur'an that at the time of resurrection your hands will speak and they will give witness against you. That is, you start feeling your own centers, these are five, six and seven centers, and they indicate what's wrong with you, within yourself, what's the problem. Also you can feel the cool breeze coming out of your head, cool breeze of the Holy Ghost, because this sleeping power, which is called as the Kundalini, Kundala means coils, is the power of pure desire within us. So now we have <clears throat> this kind of a mechanism within us existing. Now this is a living process of evolution. And we must understand that we don't pay for living process and we can't even explain it. Because when you take a small little seed and put it in the Mother Earth, it germinates by itself, spontaneously. You don't pay to the Mother Earth anything. And when it germinates, it grows into a tree and produces thousands of seeds. So in that little seed, <coughs> the map of all the things it was going to create is there. How it works? We never ask this question. We take all the things for granted. We don't even ask the question, how this wonderful eye of ours is made, like a camera, and that how we are programmed within ourselves like computers. You see, this is the color. You don't have to think about it, it's there. Through our sensory organs, how we find out things, we never question it. But to answer now, all our questions, we have to become the Divine Computer. And that's why we have to be connected to the mains, I call them, as the people who are Self-realized, the people who have got their Spirit in their attention. Now let's have a look at more advanced clearing techniques in Sahaja Yoga. and. The clearing techniques, the objective is really to bring our system in balance so that we, the energy, the Kundalini can rise more and more and with more strength within us. And the, the amazing thing in Sahaja Yoga is that you can actually feel in your hands, uh, what's the state of your subtle system. Therefore, you can actually take the right actions to correct it. And the way we feel it in our hands is that if you feel heat in one hand or the other hand, it indicates an imbalance or at the channel level. Or if you feel some heat, tingling or numbness in some fingers, it's an indication that a specific chakra needs to be balanced, needs to be opened or improved. So how can we do that? So. I'll just show you. You can do it with me. Uh, put your hands on your lap. That's how we meditate. And in a previous week, we learned how to balance the left and the right. So, for example, if you feel heat in the left hand, but coolness in the right hand, it means there is an imbalance in the left. So the way to correct it, is to put the right hand towards the ground, or if you are sitting on the ground, you can just rest your right hand on the ground. So that's the first technique. And we have seen that in an earlier week. But I want to show you another way to do that. If your 
left hand is hot or you don't feel anything, you can actually give balance in it and the right hand is cool. You can actually bring the right towards the left. And the way we do that is by rising with the right hand, the energy from the right hand and bringing it to the left side. So we can do it together, but only if you feel heat in the left and coolness in the right. Otherwise, just meditate. Rise your right side and bring the energy to the left. And we can do that seven times. So this is another technique you can apply if you feel heat in the left hand. In the same way, if you feel more heat in the right hand uh, and coolness in the left hand, you do it the other way. You can take the energy from the left and bring it down to the right. And that will cool down the right side. So, with the right hand, starting on the left, bringing the energy from the left to the right. Like that. And we can again do it seven times, only if you feel heat in the right hand. Needless to say, if you feel coolness in both hands, you don't need to do all that. And just as a reminder, a couple of weeks ago, we have seen that also to cool down the right side, we can use the air elements or the ether by putting our left hand toward the sky like that. And all the excess heat in our right hand will simply dissipate through, through the left. And when you meditate, you can actually feel the right hand cooling. All right. So now I would like to show you some other techniques uh, to actually cleanse ourselves. And uh, as you can see on the chart here, you have seven chakras and each chakra has a specific aspect. You have the left side, the center, and the right side of this specific chakra. And they have different qualities. And you can refer to our website or to our, to our, to our material, uh, written material documents to, to understand that a bit more. So how to improve your chakra? First of all, you need to feel which chakra is affected. And when you meditate, you might feel some tingling on specific fingers, some numbness uh, on, on these fingers or heat. So for example, if I feel the middle finger here on the left, it indicates that the left side of my Nabi chakra is actually needs some attention. So there are two ways we can actually improve it. The first, the first way, very simply, when we meditate and we feel it, we can just put our right hand on the chakra. And we can meditate like that for maybe a couple of minutes. Another way to do it is by what we call giving a bandan to the specific chakra. For example, if I feel my little finger here on the left, which indicates that my left heart needs some attention, we, we can do what we call a bandan, which is making a circle clockwise like that, in, at the level of the chakra, seven times, and then just letting go the negativity that, or the issues that are related to the chakra. And you can do that because now your hands are powerful. Your hands have vibrations and they are effective.
And for example, if you feel the the little uh, of the little finger on the right, you do it in front of the right chakra. And if you feel both fingers, you do it in the center. Very simple. Now, if you feel more of a left side problem, if you feel some fingers that are really annoying you, very numb or tingling, uh, you can use a candle. And I take a candle. And that candle can, should, can be used in front of you, but only on the left side. Never use the candle on the right side. So, for example, if I feel my, uh, my uh, pointing finger here, this one, I can actually do what we could, this bandan that I did just show you, but this time uh, with the candle, like that. Be careful not to burn yourself. Take a good distance. Take a nice wide candle holder. But that's also very effective to cleanse the left side only. So for example, if I feel my uh, thumb on the left side, I can clear it by doing this bandan or this, this circle in front of that the Svadhisthana chakra, which is the second chakra, the one in yellow on the chart. All right. So this is how we can also improve our meditation. And the way we meditate every day is to take five minutes in the morning, 10 minutes in the morning, meditate. Don't worry too much about clearing in the morning. Just meditate. Try to go in thoughtless awareness. Try to feel the joy, the satisfaction, the fulfillment, the awareness of being a realized person, of being in meditation. In the evening, that's when you apply all these techniques to clear yourself. The foot soak we have seen in previous weeks. Balancing yourself. The left, the right. You can work on your chakras. But the objective is to breathe back in balance. And when we are in balance, this energy, the Kundalini, will rise stronger and stronger every day. And you will reach higher depth of meditation and establish fully your self-realization. So now to conclude this session, let's raise the Kundalini ourselves. We'll do that by the left hand rising upwards and the right hand rotating around the left hand. And on top of our head, again, we'll do a knot, which symbolizes our desire for this energy to stay awake to stay at the seventh center. We do it a second time. And we do it a third time. And the third time we'll do it, we'll do three knots. And we'll try to keep our attention there. And then we do a bandan, which is like that, with the right hand starting on the left, going around us, to the right and back. And this is protecting our aura. And this should be done before and after the meditation or before and after the clearing. We do that seven times. You can even do that before you go out in the morning. Raise your energy, put yourself in the bandan before you go out and when you come back. And that will certainly help you to to center your attention, to get your attention within and uh, be in touch with reality. So I hope you enjoyed this session and uh, I'm looking forward to see you in the next part of Meditation First Steps. Thank you very much and see you soon.
Spirit. 